First samples of production pieces out of the mold got here yesterday, so let's strap it on the dyno. So inevitably, every time somebody posts a dyno video, there's somebody in the crowd that's got to say, what you got the hood up? Why don't you close it? Well, we've got pretty good dyno fans here, but they're still not going to equal the airflow on the entire car at 150 miles an hour, which you could see by the gauges in the runs you watched. The car's reaching 150 miles an hour. You close this hood with only small fans, you're not going to simulate the same amount of airflow that you would at 150 miles an hour. All you're doing by dynoing the car with the hood up is just letting close to ambient air get to the filter. Typically on the dash, you can see there's a two to three degree temperature difference. It's usually above because it's sitting down in the engine compartment. These fans, though they're powerful, will not simulate that air, thus not a fair test. So we're using HP tuners to data log the car just to make sure that we're making the runs at the same coolant temp, all right around you know 180, 185, and able to look at timing logs. And this car bone stock was running 17 and a half to 18 and a half degrees of timing. And when we put the JLT on, the timing stayed the same. So the, the power difference is just from airflow. But it's kind of crazy this car making 726 and 586 with nothing but a JLT intake. We'll run it again on Monday and see what happens. So we had the car on the dyno Friday in unbelievable conditions. 70 degrees, 11% humidity, and in stock trim, stock airbox, stock intake, it made 699, 703 horsepower. Uh, it had 17 to 18 and a half degrees of timing in it stock, which is extremely high. So the car was basically giving it the timing that it could use uh, for the conditions that day. And it made the numbers extremely high. So what I want to do is go ahead and I put it back to stock and we're going to run it today. Today we're looking at still pretty good conditions, 73 degrees. 35 and a half percent humidity and we'll go ahead and see what kind of power this humidity takes away but it's really about the before and after and it still made 23 horsepower we only ran it once it could have made more it could have made less after that but that's all we did going to come back today and try it again all these dyno tests that we're doing we're plugging in the laptop firing up hp tuners and we're data logging the car not only are we looking at the gauges on the dash, but we're looking internally at the exact coolant temperature and the exact oil temperature. We wanna make sure that each run is done at the same temperature. Variance in coolant temp can be a variance in timing. And now we can also monitor timing as well. So we make sure that each run has got the same coolant temperatures. So when we give you the numbers, we know they're repeatable.
Okay, uh, we came in another day to go ahead and run this car because we thought that Friday's numbers were just crazy. And again, we've got really good weather today, um, but this car makes, it makes 700 horsepower stock. Um, it's got 1,500 miles on it. It's well broken in. So it made 703 and 576 uh, bone stock. That's the green run here. Um, that was the best. We only compare against the best. We don't put the worst stock run and the best after run. It's, we compare the best of the best. So you've got 703, uh, the best JLT run, 740 and 587. Um, so you're looking at some pretty, pretty big gains there from just the intake. Uh, you can see here, if you look at the cursor, right here at the end of the graph uh, where the looking at 7300 rpms we're at 700 uh, bone stock and 735 with the JLT uh, come down lower into uh, 7000 rpms we're at uh, 684 almost 685 and 717 you're looking at 32 uh, and the torque as well you're looking at 507 to 531 five, almost 532 um, 500 to 525 torque. That's 25 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, 661 to 693. You know, that's amazing. All the way across, all the way from down here. You know, down, you know, five grand, 5,500. It just starts to scream. So what I want to do now is we're going to uh, put a video camera on the gauges and I want to show you what uh, the under hood temperatures are while we're at wide open throttle on the track. So what was the goal of this video? Basically to show you that we're enthusiasts and we want to do things as thorough as possible. We want to make sure that when you purchase a product from JLT, you can take that product and you can see how we did the test and you could go to your local dyno shop if you wanted to and you could repl replicate it and you could see those same results. That's why we show you how we data log and we, we monitor inlet air temps, we monitor coolant temps, we monitor oil temps. We want to make sure that they're the same because it does me no good if we do a very low baseline and a very high ending run and you don't see those results. We also want to show you that we took the time to do the R&D and make sure that this is exactly what we wanted to send out to the customer. We made sure that this seals to the hood as much as possible. It's open on this side, but it's open on this side because it's still getting fresh air from the fender. But we also have this large duct that's bringing air from the grill to the filter. That's why we showed you those videos on the street looking at the inlet air temperatures at wide open throttle. Uh, when you're doing an eighth mile run or a quarter mile run, we, get, we see comments online, people talking about, oh, well, your underhood temps are, are high. That's why you should dyno with the hood closed. It's more realistic. It's not realistic. You can see that the inlet air temps at wide open throttle at 135 miles an hour are three to four degrees above ambient. They're not 100 degrees. That's why we dyno with the hood up, which also brings us to that. You can see that we've got pretty decent dyno fans, but they're not going to simulate 130 to 150 miles an hour of air flowing over the entire hood. Dynoing with the hood up is only getting near ambient air to that filter, which is what you see on the street. That's realistic. That's apples to apples. You close that hood, that temperature goes up because you've got small dyno fans and you're, the car sitting still. 
you're not going to have apples to apples tests. So that's why we do that and that's why we're trying to show you that. In the end, we feel we've got the best kit out there for the 2020 GT500 and we hope you agree.